So, Nottingham Trent University, um, I'm a research fellow uh, from the Flexural Composites Research Laboratory, which is set up fairly recently. Um, and uh, today, I'm going to be talking about something a little bit um, graphic, but quite meaningful in terms of art and design and, and outputs of art and design, and especially craft. Because uh, what we're doing is essentially craft is underpinned by science. So, warning, graphic warning, everybody, okay. Um, if you're a little bit squeamish, perhaps, uh, I'll give you a heads up anyway when the pictures are coming up. Uh, so, <laughs> what we're trying to do essentially is um, recreate the, the human body um, in all of its biofidelic realism, if you like. So, um, everything from the, the tactility of the muscle tissue, the, the variability between different types of tissues, soft tissues, hard tissues, um, the, the uh, position within the human body, the morphology. Um, but more interestingly is, is what these outputs mean um, in, uh, in an actual sense of, uh, of an output. So uh, essentially what we're trying to do is replace human cadavers and animal um, substitutes or surrogates uh, with, with realistic experience for the surgeon. So um, part of that essentially um, entails lots of different things, but um, the, the most essential part of it really is looking at the CT data. So everyone knows what a CT or an MRI image is. We take that imagery um, and we reconstruct it digitally using um, uh, software, different types of, uh, of processing <coughs> techniques that I can't really go into. But um, uh, essentially, once we've got that digital image segmented, cleaned up, we're able to then 3D print that image um, and then uh, use tooling and manufacturing processes to sort of expand that. Um, I'm going to have an image coming up in a second, but um, you can just see in the corner a little flavour of what's <laughs> going to happen in a second. Um, what you've got here is um, a, a kind of an overall of surgical um, feedback on, on what they interpret the materials to be. In this case, it's the human heart. And you can see the 17 different hardnesses within one organ. So this is the, the, the sort of detail that we're looking at when we're trying to re represent um, a, a living organ. In fact, a lot of our research points to um, using cadavers actually teach in incorrect techniques when uh, we're trying to teach surgery. So um, as soon as you open up a chest, for instance, of a, of a patient um, in a thoracostomy, then you, you see in a cadaver almost nothing because everything's deflated and, and flaccid and morbid. But in, in a real living person, there's lots of fluid going on. Everything's inflated. It looks very colourful, um, if you like. Uh, and uh, you're going to see that in just a second. Um, so this is uh, an early prototype that we did uh, of a, of a six-year-old's heart. Um, you can see on the, on the left, this was the, the stripped back um, digital model. Uh, on the right, this is the sort of fleshed out um, simulation, if you like. So digital model, silicon simulation. So this is a, a, a collaboration we did with King's College London, the biomedical department. Um, and we're looking to simulate uh, a coartication, which is narrowing of the descending aorta uh, in a patient-specific study. Uh, and part of this, what the, the, the culmination of this research, um, basically we're able to pinpoint and, um, and justify things that they were talking about in the medical world, which they would never be able to simulate before, not only because of ethical issues, but um, other types of peripherals going on around it. I mean, you, you couldn't exactly do this on the living patient because they're very poorly. So <laughs> able to, to take the scan data, recreate that, um, and, and then synthesize it in materials which mimic the living properties. So the elasticity, the hardness, the flexibility, all those things that, that make up that tactile, tactile experience of actually touching uh, an, a, a, a real living organ, or in this case, a vascular system. Um, so this is kind of where we're at at the minute. Um, we're simulating the thoracic cavity, so we've got heart, lungs, the vascular system, even some of the airways. Um, in <laughs> with, with kind of uh, an overall view, really, of making these things affordable, we have to limit the fidel fidelity. So maximum fidelity, minimum technology. So there's nothing plugging into it. There's no wires. There's no sensors. It's literally all simulated. So uh, what we've got here is a, a life cast of a living person made by trauma effects. It was then um, cast in silicon. You can see the internals here. This is in progress. Um, and then, hopefully, this video is going to work. Will it work? It will work. Um, so this is the, the finished simulated tra um, trauma surgery trainer. So 
this is all simulated. This is not a real person. Uh, let me just reassure you. Okay. <laughs> um, so you can see here, there's um, the, the lungs are operational, the heart's pumping. There's um, there's a working vascular system. So if you nick an artery at any point, you're able to then suture it. You can stitch this thing together. You can heal it up. Um, literally, just in a, a matter of you know, minutes, really, you're ready to do this entire process over again. So not only is it repairable and reusable, but it's also maximum fidelity. So every aspect uh, of the living person's anatomy is represented. And it's not just a craft exercise. This is craft underpinned by science. So what we've essentially got is all of the data taken from a living person from that CT. And then we've developed that, processed it, so then we can recreate it using craft techniques, using manufacturing techniques, using the experience of surgeons, but also, this is all meaningless if you don't design it around a user. So right from the very beginning, our main focus was asking the user what is possible, you know, what would you like, what is usable, um, and, and how we can actually make this thing even more real. How can we, how can we expand this to become a fully simulated body, which you literally can stick in two suitcases, take around wherever you want to. <laughs> couldn't imagine, the, <laughs> couldn't imagine the, the look at customs if you get searched, but uh, <laughs> the idea is to make this thing. You could take it to the street outside and practice major trauma surgery. You can stick it in a helicopter and, and practice the, these, uh, these uh, procedures whilst in the air. You know, you, you don't, you're not tethered to any kind of environment or, or, um, or power source to make this thing work. Um, and, and, you know, the, the, the level of courage, co uh, coverage that it's received, uh, it kind of it only kind of reiterates the value for the, of this in the medical world, but also, you know, from, from a, a technical aspect and a, a, um, a technological uh, advancement point of view, you know, there's, there's lots of layers of technology that we're developing alongside this, which would be um, advantageous for peripheral um, research. So we're already looking at uh, the, the skull, the brain, the eyes, um, the skin that fits over the skull, uh, for safety equipment, uh, ballistics testing, all those types of things, but also for um, uh, abdominal surgery as well. Um, you know, the, the list goes on and on. Every time I talk to somebody about this, we get new opportunities, new collaboration. So anybody wants to collaborate, I'd love to. But <laughs> um, so come and find your uh, flyer at the front here. You can, uh, you can see there's a the thing here. For, but uh, what I'd like to do really is um, show you the actual things, if that's okay. Um, now, if any of you are kind of, hang on, I'm gonna put this mic down. So, you go. so this is, this is the lungs, um, and these are these are inflatables. You saw on the model. These are inflatable. These take them from, from scan data. They're strangely cold and slimy, actually. Uh, and then, perhaps I'll just pass one of them around. Um, so the beauty of this thing is that you can literally you unplug it, you know, in the anatomy class, uh, and pass it around the class. Everybody gets a feel and, and, and see how it actually works, how it connects with the rest of the body. In terms of the cardiopulmonary system, you know. Being able to literally disconnect this, pass it around the classroom, anatomy 101 a medical school, that is an experience that you never find with a real person, much less a, a corpse, you know. All these, uh, these layers of, uh, of sort of accessibility and interactivity that you get, it goes along. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, you, you'd never find with any other type of, of learning experience. And it's only really through um, a combination of of multidisciplinary skills. Um, um, yeah, apologies for the uh, slime. Um, <laughs> that's my, my tissue or something afterwards. Uh, this is the this is the heart. So this is the new the new heart model as well. So you can feel um, you know, th there's differences between each of those regions uh, as well as the, um, the the vascular system here. Um, but it, the essential process is is the same. It's broad uh, and overarching across different disciplines, like I say, um, right from um, interpreting CT data, uh, dissecting the imagery, segmentation, cleaning it up, 3D printing it, um, manufacturing the tooling, um, the material science side of things, even just gathering the data together was a task in itself, you know, trying to get all the data together in one place, uh, the hardness, the tactility, the elasticity, you know, and even the fibers and, and how it looks and the coloration. It's all something that we needed to draw together from lots of different parts. So, I'm 
just being flagged that my time is up now. Um, thank you very much. Thank you.